Chinese traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you enjoy the trip, and it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we meet an enterprising gentleman who, who knew all the angles. He played them for all they're worth. I call his story, It's Only Money. My friend Charlie Ruffing is a highly educated man. He has a degree from the School of Experience, and he's done uh, postgraduate work at Larsney College to win an advanced degree as an expert chiseler and all-around confident friend. If there's a way of making easy money he hasn't tried, uh, it's not worth trying. That's right, but I'm reforming. Beginning now, I'm never going to touch another dishonest dollar. You think I don't mean it? <laughs> Just listen to my story and see. Let's go back a few months. I was doing all right cleaning up on the ponies. I'd worked out a brand new system, see? I owned eight different race horses under eight different names. I had a different trainer and jockey for each horse. I gave all my instructions by phone, and nobody knew I had any connection with any of the horses. Well, every once in a while, it worked out so that only my horses were running in a certain race. And then I decided which, I, which one I wanted to win, gave all my different trainers their instructions by phone to make sure the right horse won, then went out and placed my bet. Well, naturally, I could only work it for a while, but I planned to make one big cleanup and quit. My partner was Figures Freddy, a big numbskull who couldn't read or write, but could add up figures in his head like an adding machine. Well, we were sitting in my apartment listening to the racing results. Uh, coming into the stretch now, I had a girl in the lead by her neck. Steps on the second by a line, second coating coming up fast on the outside. Shut it out, figures. We haven't any toe on the place. Oh, shut it out, we say so. Steps on, takes the leak. What's our bankroll now, figures? Uh, let me think. Uh, oh, yeah, $25,920.48. Is that all? Yeah. Well, I thought we had 50 grand in the kick. Well, expenses have been heavy. Gee, well, what it costs to feed eight horses, not to mention entry fees. Why, hay alone sets you now, back... Now, me the details. Yeah, sure, Charlie. Figures I'm getting uneasy. Somebody's going to tumble to our setup soon. That's what I've been telling you. Well, shoot the works. One big killing and quit. What's our next setup? Tomorrow, the 5th at Sandy Park. Five horses running... All out. Yeah, yeah, I remember. We got the prize in it, huh? Yeah. Saving him for the right spot. Uh, what odds do you think it'll bring? Ooh, 15 to 1, easy. Then the bankroll goes on surprise tomorrow. Yeah, but who takes such a big bet? Odds on Harry and his syndicate can handle it. We played him careful, won only a little, now we can nick him good. Uh, Harry is a real tough cookie. If you welch on him or he catches you being crooked... He just as soon drop you off the top of a building as not. He won't catch us. We'll clean up good and clear out. Fast. So I telephoned my trainers and instructions. Made sure Surprise would win. And me and Figures dropped up to odds on Harry's private bookie office the next afternoon. Well, Charlie, how's the boy? Drop in for business or just to cut up touches? Uh, a little business, Harry. Thought I might make a better two. <laughs> you know, just pass the time. Got your eye on anything special? Well, figures here has been doing some handicapping for me. Uh, thinks the fifth at Sandy Downs looks good. Oh, the fifth? Oh. Well, let's see who's in it. Summer Rose, Second Cousin, April Morn, Firecracker, and Surprise. Firecracker's a favorite. I can give you two to one on him. Oh, now, Harry, you know me. I always like a long shot. I was thinking of a surprise. Surprise? Yeah. You're kidding. No, Harry, surprise ain't a bad horse. He, he just had hard luck. He's due. So is my rent. All right. Here's my chance to win my dough back. I was going to set a one grand top on you, Charlie, but if you want to bet on surprise, there's no limit. 
Now, Harry, you tempt me. Might go the whole work. Anything up to 50 grand, Charlie, and no more the better. Well, I've only got 25 G's in cash. I might go for 50 if you'd take my check for the difference. Why not? 50,000 on surprise in the first. But I can't give you any track cards. 10 to 1 is the best I can give you. Ah, well, it's only money. I'll take it. Gee, that'll mean a 500 grand payoff. If he wins, figures. If he wins. Oh, sure, sure. If. Surprise hasn't got a chance. Still, I'd better lay off part of that bet. Excuse me while I get on the phone and arrange it. Harry went off to make arrangements to place part of the bet, and figures and I just looked at each other and sat tight. $500,000. This was it. This was the big jackpot I'd been working toward all my life. The more I thought about it, the better I felt. And when the race started, I felt even better yet. Surprise started in front, and he stayed there, all according to my orders. They're on the final time. It's still surprise. April morn, summer rose, second cousin and firecracker in that order. Surprise is two lengths in front and pulling away, which is a real surprise because he hasn't won a race all season. Now they're in the stretch and surprise. Wait a minute. Surprise is in trouble. His right rein broke. The jockey can't control him. Surprise is pulling wide. He's angling across the track in front of April Morn. That may get him disqualified even if he does win. No. No, April Morn's gotten around him. April Morn is almost at the wire. She's over. Summer Rose second, Firecracker third, second cousin fourth, and Surprise, who had a race all wrapped up, has stopped. The jockey is getting off. Gosh, Charlie, he didn't win. Oh, yeah. He didn't, did he? I told you he didn't have a chance. Well, as you always say, Charlie, that's only money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> only money? You want to settle up now? Or are you going to bet on the sick? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I've had enough for today, Harry. <laughs> well, here's the 25 grand I have on me. I'll give you a check for the other 25. Uh, you do that, Charlie. The check will be good, won't it? Good? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, what's funny, Harry? <laughs> you two wise guys. You're funny. Well, what do you mean? You and your eight different stables, Charlie. What an idea. You mean you know about it? Yeah, I just found out a couple of days ago. Oh, it was kind of clever in a way. But you see, Charlie, you went at it wrong. What do you mean, Harry? Charlie bought the horses, but I bought the jockey. I figure you two would be aiming for that race. I guessed it would be surprise you set up to win. As soon as you made the bet, I got on the phone and... Oh, do I need to blueprint the operation? But Harry, that ain't honest. Isn't it? No. <laughs> I'll take that check, Charlie. And if it bounces, so will you. From a 20th floor window. How do you like that? Odds on Harry had played me for a sucker. Me, Charlie Ruffing, honored graduate from the School of Experience. So what did I do about it? Two hours later, figures and me were on a plane heading out over the deep blue ocean. Gee, Charlie, there ain't nothing under us but water. I never knew there was so much water. Well, now you know. How far is it to the nearest land? How far, huh? About a mile and a half. Oh, that near? Well, I guess I could swim that far. Which direction, Charlie? Straight down. Uh, shut up, I'm thinking. Yeah, but Charlie... Oh, yeah, what is it? Well, wh why are we flying to Europe? Well, we've been moving so fast, I, I ain't been able to figure it out yet. Well, I thought it was obvious. We gave odds on Harry a bad check for 25 grand, didn't we? Yeah, I guess we did. And what'll he do when it bounces? Well, he'll come looking for us. And he won't be feeling free. No. So with my last go, we buy tickets for Paris, France. Always heard it's cheap to live there. Uh, and it's a long ways away from odds on Harry. Once we get there, well, we'll just have to figure a new racket. So we reach Paris and get rooms in a flea bag of a hotel. And I think and think and think. And I haven't an idea. in front of me, wondering if jail or starvation is better when Figures brings up a pal he's met someplace. 
But figures never worries. He can't read, so the news and the papers don't bother him. And he hasn't brains enough to worry on his own account. Charlie, I, I want you to meet the Count. Count Alessandro is my pal, Charlie. It is a pleasure. Well, sit down, Count. Are you, uh, are you French? Well, I am uh, part French, part Swiss, part Belgian, uh, part Italian. Well, a man apart, huh? <laughs> uh, have a drink. You're most kind. A uh, guy found another bottle of wine. Well, uh, what's your racket, Count? Pardon? What's your game? How, how, do you, how do you make a living? Well, he, he's an inventor, Charlie. Oh, an inventor, huh? Any money in it? Uh, hell, I, no. Oh, uh, here's your wine. So, have a drink. What do you invent, Count? You want to know what, Charlie? He's invented a machine for making money. What kind of money? Any kind of money, my friend. French, English, American. Well, then why aren't you rich? I, I dare not use my own invention. I am, I must confess, it's uh, too timid. Oh? I'm afraid of the police. But I live in hopes of meeting someone who will know how to... Cash out, as you say in America. Well, Count, you're beginning to interest me. I suspect you're trying to work a racket on me. But just the same, I'll take a gander at this money-making machine of yours. I figured this little Count uh, Alessandro, as he called himself, was a phony. But I didn't have anything better to do, so I let him lead me in figures to a room about as big as a mousetrap. And there he showed me a couple of big tanks full of some kind of green liquid. And a gadget like a camera, only with three lenses instead of one. There, monsieur. I call it the photographic duplicator. It will duplicate anything printed or engraved, <laughs> even the money. Especially money. Hey, uh, show Charlie those French bills you turned out, huh? Oui, in my pocket. You see, Mr. Charlie, thousand franc notes. Uh -huh. Hey, they look good. Boy, they look very good. Yes. Can you spend them? Oh, but yes. Except I am so timid. I'm afraid of the police. I am afraid to enlist aid from Les Apaches, our French gangster. So? I have this this wonderful invention. I, I don't even know what to do with well, it. Now, now, don't start weeping. You said something about American money. Uh, let's see you make me some. Gladly, Monsieur, gladly. But I need an American bill to start. I knew there was a catch in it, the old money switch. Come on, figures, let's get out of here. No, now, wait, wait a second, Charlie. The count is on the level. All he needs is a $1 bill. You see, that's to get the right paper. Then he needs a 10 to photograph, and that's all. And you, you get the 10 back. I'll bet I do. Come on, come on, we got business elsewhere. I, I do not blame you, monsieur. Do I look like a great inventor? No. I am how you say it. A mess. I have no courage. I am part French, part Swiss, part Belgian. And part phony. Now, I'll put up the dough, Charlie. You just watch. Okay, Count, now here's a one and a ten. Do your stuff. So I watched. Figures gave Count Alessandro a one-buck bill. The Count dipped it in the tank, sloshed it around a bit, and it came out snow white. Just blank paper. Now he's got genuine paper to work with. You see, Charlie? Okay, Count. Turn it into a ten. So next, the Count took a ten-buck bill and put it inside his funny camera. And then he dipped the blank paper that had been a one into a green solution. He took it out, dried it, and then he put it inside the camera, too. Turned on a bright light for about five seconds and took it out again. It was still blank. Sure, it's still blank, Charlie. That's got to be developed, you know, like a photograph. Go ahead. Show him, Count. So the Count dipped the blank bill into a red solution. He sloshed it around. Gradually, it started to darken. It became light green and then dark green. Then he took it out and he handed it to me. It was a ten-buck bill. So good, even a tax collector would have accepted it. There you see, Charlie. Here's my ten-buck bill, and here's the... the... Photographic duplicate. Yeah. It's exactly the same, even the serial number. Hey, maybe you've got something here. Sure, we got two ten-dollar bills where we only had one. And the extra one is genuine, too, Charlie. 
That's the first genuine counterfeit ever made. You see, Mr. Charlie, the great invention, yes? Count, this is the greatest invention since the paramutual machine. And me and figures are the boys to work it. <laughs> Charlie, uh, I, I've been figuring. Yeah? Anything bigger than a hundred is hard to pass. Anything smaller takes too long to add up the big dough. That's right. So we should concentrate on hundreds. Now, uh, a million bucks is a nice round thing. <laughs> okay. So round, so firm, so fully packed. Yeah, well, it, it, it takes 10,000 hundreds to make a million. Now, to get the right paper for 10,000 bills, we got to start with 10,000 singles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The count bleaches them white. Huh? He photographs hundreds on the paper, and we got a million dollars in genuine counterfeit dough. Oh, keep <laughs> talking. I love to hear big figures like that. Yeah, but uh, where are we going to get the 10,000 singles? Well, why not start smaller, say, uh... A couple of grand at a time. Oh, now, Charlie, I ain't so bright. I, I, I don't know how to read, but I, I do know something. And one is the Count is a scared pigeon. He's, he's the nervous kind, you see? Mm. And we got to pull one big deal, and we got to pull it fast. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we'll get busy tomorrow. When there's a deal to be pulled, I work fast. The next day, I took my last 200 bucks to American Express and got singles for them. And then me and figures called on Count Alessandro again. My pal Charlie is ready to work with you, Count. How fast can you turn out the dough? But, monsieur, I am not positive. I wish to continue this affair. During the night, I began thinking about if we are caught, the uh, prison is not a nice place. No, we won't be caught. All you have to do is bleach $1 bills and turn them into hundreds. Yes, but... I have 200 singles here. First, we'll turn them all into tens, you know, like we did last night. That'll give us 2,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. We'll exchange that for singles, 2,000 of them, mm -hmm. and we're off to the races. All right, come on, start the machinery, Count. Let's get going. We'll dedicate the, uh, Charlie Ruffing Private Mint. <laughs> Well, we worked as fast as we could. It took a week to turn those singles into tens with a count photographic duplicator. And then I had to exchange those tens for more singles. Well, that was trickier. A sudden flood of American money in Paris might make somebody suspicious. So Figures and I went about it real carefully. We're just about finished before an eagle-eyed cashier at American Express thought he recognized me. I ducked out before he could be sure. But I knew the situation was serious. What do you mean we've got to stay hold up here, Charlie? I do not like it. If the police think they may suspect something. Nobody suspects anything yet. But we got to play it close to our vests. In other words, these 2,000 singles are all we dare get together. Yeah, but that'll only give us 200 grand. Never mind. Get me back to the good old USA with $200,000 in the Count's formula. And in a year, I'll own the joint. Figures and I rented the room next to the count, and we buckled down to business. First, we bleached the 2,000 singles into clean white paper. Then we ran into an obstacle. Uh, monsieur, I uh, got to say it. Uh, we have not provided a hundred dollar bill for me to photograph. Hey, that's right. What do we do, Charlie? Well, we'll just get one, that's all. Yeah, but we got no cash left. We bleached it all white. For Pete's sake. Why, you stupid brain. Well, I regret, uh, monsieur. I recall, we have still in the camera the $10 bill from the last operation. Well, that's better. Make up about 510 see? Now, that's for expenses and passage money. Once we start making 100 we're not going to develop any of them. They're going to the States with us as clean white paper, photographic paper, see? Yes. All right, that way we don't run any risks. And anybody who searches our baggage only finds blank paper. We'll dip the stuff in a count solution back in New York when we're safe. Oh, sure. That's smart, John. All right, now, you two get busy. When you got the tens made, go buy a $100 bill someplace. Uh, don't go to a bank. They may be alerted or something. Hey, uh, look, there must be a money change in joint handy. Oui, oui, monsieur. I, I know one. He's very unscrupulous, but uh, he never uh, asks questions. Well, then go to him. Uh, figures, you go along, see the count doesn't get gypped. Yeah. 
All right, now get going and let me get a little shut eye, will you? I'm just dead on my feet. <laughs> morning when I woke up, Charlie Ruffing's private mint was going full blast. While I was asleep, the count had made up 50 tens. He and figures had bought a hundred dollar bill, and it was in the camera, with a blank paper being photographed at the rate of one a minute. Oh, a hundred bucks a minute. That was the kind of money I'd been aiming for all my life. But it took about a week to finish up the job, with me and figures packing the white paper into a trunk. If a customs inspector looked at it, it was perfectly innocent. But when we got back to my apartment in New York, dipped it in the count solution, it would become 200 grand in money so good it couldn't be told from the original. Figures wanted to develop a few of the hundreds for spending money, but I wouldn't let him touch one of them. I wasn't risking any last-minute slip-up, you know, a raid by the cops or something. Well, we wrapped up the deal, left the count ten of the blank hundreds for his cut, and we took off by plane with all that wonderful paper and several jugs of developers. The next afternoon, we were safely back in my New York apartment getting down to business. Okay, figures. Pour the jug of developer in the basin. Right, Charlie? (laughs) Now, I'll open up this package of paper. And we will develop a little cash. <laughs> that sounds good to me, Charlie. <laughs> well, that must be the boy from the delicate session with the grub I ordered. I'll get it. Just bring it in, we... Oh. Hello, Charlie. Surprise. Harry, you... And a couple of my boys. Come on in, boys. We want to keep this price. No, no, wait, wait, Harry. I, uh, I, I just got back from Europe. I swung a big deal. I got all the dough I owe you and more, too. For your sake, I hope that's true. Also, I uh, I got a deal on, and I, uh, I want to cut you in on it. <laughs> but I'd like to talk about it in private. Uh, can't the uh, boys wait outside while we talk? All right, Charlie. For a couple of minutes. Now, wait here, boy. But come fast if I call. Now, just what is this deal you mentioned, Charlie? I'll give you two minutes to outline it. I can outline it in one minute. How would you like a half interest? in the United States Mint. Harry got interested fast. I told him I'd fly back to Europe and bring Count Alessandro and his apparatus here. Harry and his syndicate would arrange for the distribution. Yeah, we could easily push 10 million a year of our special genuine counterfeit. Yeah, that appealed to him. That sounds good, Charlie. If true. Harry, we can demonstrate right on the spot. We've got the paper, we've got the developer. Figures. Yeah, Charlie. Develop a hundred buck bill for Harry. Sure, Charlie. (laughs) Well, our first hundred, Harry. We'll frame it for a souvenir, huh? How's it coming, figures? It's turning green. Hey, you see, Charlie, uh, Harry? Hey. I'll be a horse's uncle. Hey, I, I, I can see the figures in the corner. A hundred. Another couple of seconds, and it'll be ready, and then I'll try. So you see, Harry, what a big thing this is? Yeah, we can develop an international syndicate. England, France, Switzerland, Sweden, even. Yeah. Oh, I will load everything in sight before we finish. Okay, it's all done. Here it is, Harry. Hey, that sure does look pretty, doesn't it? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Looks just like... Why, you two-timing chiselers. Huh? You double-crossing crooks. What kind of a gag is that? Something's wrong. Fuck him. Oh, I'll hit you two. I'll make you so sore. Yeah. Uh, Catch him. Yeah, I got him. Lower him. Gently. Yeah. That's it, that's it. Now, let me see that hundred-dollar bill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for the love of mud. What, Charlie? Trouble. Let's go. Fast. Down the fire escape. <laughs> here in Mexico City, huh? Yeah, but Charlie, why are we here? What's wrong? You, you, you ain't said a word to me since we busted down that fire escape. Yeah, I was afraid I'd brain you. Look, figures, look at this hundred dollar bill. Read what it says. Yeah, well, I, I can't read, Charlie, you know that. I, I can read the numbers, though. One hundred, there's nothing wrong there. Yeah, 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 but the writing says Bank of Richmond 
$100, Confederate States of America. Yeah, I thought it's the United States. It is the United States, but the Confederate States existed only during the war between the states. Oh. Crooked money changer in Paris pawned it off on you in account. Because neither of you could read English, it's an old Confederate bill. We have... We just counterfeited $200,000 in worthless Confederate money. So here I am, stuck in Mexico City. But I got a big deal on, see? I just bought an old map showing where $2 million in Aztec treasures hidden. And uh, if you want to go in with me and you got $10,000 for expenses, it's a deal. We'll clean up yet. And you don't have to worry about me cheating you out of your share. I'm taking a resolution for 1952. Charlie Ruffing isn't taking any more dishonest money. <clears throat> Confederate money, that is. Poor Charlie's business ventures, isn't it? He has such brilliant ideas, and they always seem to go wrong. But some men are like that. I know a scientist who spent his life perfecting machines for turning the gold into lead. And uh, I have a friend, a ghost, who's mortally afraid of people. If you're one of these people for whom things never go right, I suggest you try turning yourself inside out. Now, I can send you a man who... Oh, we have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You have just heard The Mysterious Traveler. Now you can follow other tense and suspenseful adventures of The Mysterious Traveler in the current issue of The Mysterious Traveler magazine, now available. In our cast with Chuck Webster, William Zuckert, and Albert Ottenheimer, with Maurice Tarpon starred in the title role. Original music under the direction of Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. Bill Tonkin speaking. This program came to you from New York. like stories of mystery, of eerie adventure, of things dark and unseen, stay tuned to Mutual every weekday evening and join the I Love a Mystery listeners. You're sure to love I Love a Mystery. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm-hmm.